welcome. Happy New Year, everyone. This is Sisters Park's first show for the New Year 2021. I'm Sharon Thomas Yarbrough and welcome to Sister Power. And today we're going to be talking about fear the virus, not the vaccine. And our very special guest is Dr. Teresa R. Jacobs. Uh, she's a board certified family medicine physician providing the highest quality comprehensive health care to the uninsured and underserved at risk populations at Oakhurst Medical Center. Welcome, Dr. Jacobs, to Sister Power. Well, thank you, Sharon. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Well, you, you know, we want to let everyone, you are in Georgia right now. Am I correct? That is absolutely correct. This is it. This is the it, place to be right now. It really is. And we want to start off by congratulating, congratulations to newly elected Senators Warnock and Osaw. Yes, yes. Woohoo! Oh, yes. And a special thank you to Stacey Ab Abrams. Job well done. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, she had put she has put on an incredible program to get out to vote. She was in the churches, in the recreation centers, she was in our neighborhoods. They did a wonderful, wonderful job of registering folks that had never voted before. So they got us out to vote. And I think they did a fantabulous job. Hats off to her. Hats off. And congratulations um, to those. We have, we have the Senate now. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. So now I believe we can get some things done. Uh, health care for those that are lacking health care. Uh, now's a good time to make sure that we get that uh, agenda item up and across the board. And hopefully we can get some low premiums at this particular time. And also the thing my daughter is extremely excited about, maybe some of those school loans of hers will be paid off. Oh, okay. Absolutely. I'm glad you're putting the word out. So again, we want to congratulate Senator Warnock and Osaw. There he is right there. I am so proud of Georgians. I'm so proud that people were able to get out and vote. Thank you so much. There yeah. we are. So, you know, Dr. Jacob, there has been, you know, I think today we have well over 300,000 people who have died in the USA of this coronavirus. And so we're going to talk about fear the virus, not the vaccine. So I want to ask you a few questions. Okay. Will this vaccine give me COVID-19? I think that's an excellent question. Frequently people ask me that question. Um, th the good news here is that this particular vaccine does not have the COVID virus inside of it. It is actually what they call a messenger RNA. So it has no parts of the virus in it. Once it's injected into your body, it creates these antibodies like you have COVID, but the antibodies come out and they give you immunity, uh, which is absolutely fantabulous. So no, you do not get the COVID virus from the vaccine. Good information. Was the vaccine made too quickly? You know, that's another uh, really great question, but let's just say this, that messenger RNA uh, vaccines, believe it or not, they've been working on this for over 30 years, guys. Over 30 years. In the early 1990s, they started working on this particular platform for viruses. And the fact now that they actually have a method now where they have uh, create some genetic material and make the body thinks the virus is there and allow these antibodies to build up, this is fantabulous great news because with this platform now it means that we no longer have to wait two three four five years for a vaccine now so now we have the science we have the methodology that they've been working on for over 30 years here it is now in this COVID vaccine i think it's fantabulous that's wonderful news you know you and i had a conversation last week 
um, about my girlfriend who's one of the top uh, ER physicians in Los Angeles, uh, Los Angeles, and she came out of retirement because of the coronavirus. Yeah. And this is what she said, and I, I want you to give. I want you to give me your thoughts. I don't think people who don't actually see the devastation of this disease firsthand mm -hmm. should be putting anything out there disparaging the vaccines in any way. I want to hear your thoughts about that as well. Yeah, I agree because you know I'm um, I'm not I don't work in the hospital, but I work in a primary care clinic. And uh, so are a number of my patients, have they been affected with COVID? Absolutely. Have they struggled and had issues or complications after the virus? Absolutely. These are folks 30, 40 years old, healthy before the virus. And now that some of them are struggling to breathe, they're on inhalers that they've never been on. Some of them now have diabetes and they never had any of that before. Uh, and if I'm gonna get real personal here, I've had two aunts to actually die uh, in 2020 of COVID-19. I have a brother and his wife that were admitted at the same time into the hospital with COVID-19. They're now out, just, they've been discharged they're doing better, but neither one of them are back to baseline. And it's been about three and a half, almost four weeks now. So this is a disease, a virus that are affecting black and brown folks uh, at a astronomical rate. And so before you knock this vaccine, I want you to be knowledgeable as to what the vaccine is, and then also understand how it's affecting our communities. I'm so sorry to hear about, you know, you losing your aunt. I mean, this, I, you know, unfortunately, I've had a friend tell me they have lost 11 members. One is too many. But, wow. you know, I can't even wrap my head around 11? Yeah, yeah. Close members. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's horrible. Yeah, that's tough. Well, what are the likely side effects? Uh, the likely side effects um, is... Number one, um, maybe a little pain around the ejection site. We get that with most vaccines, right? When I got my flu shot, there it was a day later, a little soreness. So you may get a little soreness around the injection site. Some folks may have a little low grade fever. Some may suffer some little muscle aches and maybe a little fatigue. But within 24 to 48 hours, all those symptoms are gone. So mild symptoms. Mild symptoms. Well, tell us about your journey with taking the vaccination, taking the vaccine. Yeah, I am about nine days out. I took, uh, I got the Moderna vaccine uh, uh, last Tuesday. And um, the first day, uh, the following day, that Wednesday, I had a little soreness around the injection site, but I didn't have anything else, guys. I had no fever, no chills, no muscle aches, nothing. Uh, and as I tell my daughter, you know, I don't have any strange things growing out of my neck. I don't have a rash. I, you know, I'm still clothed in my right mind, as the church folks say. So I haven't had any bad side effects all of my peers and colleagues that i have also gotten the vaccine none of us have experienced any traumatic uh, side effects from it so so far so good i'm going to get the second one on january 26 and uh you can check in with me i'll tell you how that goes as well oh that sounds good you know i went on your your facebook page and i found this chart about moderna and pfizer yes you have a chart can you walk us through that? Tell us about that. It's on the screen right now. Yeah, and it's the biggest difference because a lot of folks ask me, well, which, which one is better than the other? And what you have to understand is that neither one is really better than the other because the platform is the exact same platform. The science is the same science, except for Pfizer. Uh, there, when they did their formulation, they did not um, make uh, some adjustments for the temperature. So theirs have to be at that sub freezing uh, temperature, minus 90 in order for it to stay stored. As far as modernity, that is not the issue. You can keep it at the same temperature that you keep all of your vaccines. The other difference is, is that the Pfizer, that's in 21 days from day one to the second dose. 
Moderna is 28 days apart from the first uh, vaccine to the second one. Now, uh, somebody may ask me, but it looks like Moderna has more of it because the micrograms is a little bit more. Well, the studies have shown that there's not much difference as far as the efficacy or a better way to say it is the amount of antibodies that uh, is mounted in your immune system from getting the injection. It's about the same. So there's it's not very much different between the two. So I just got whatever was available at my hospital. So I didn't really care which one it was as long as I got one of them. Oh, that's great. Well, we're here with Dr. Jacobs and it's about fear the virus and not the vaccine. So I have a question for you, Dr. Jacobs. Yes. I already had, not me, but this is a, someone asked, asked me a question. I already had COVID-19 or I had a positive antibody test. Do I still need to get the vaccine? So the answer to the question is yes, but uh, with a little caveat to it. Uh, once you get COVID-19 uh, uh, or have that positive test, we now know that you will have antibodies in your system maybe about 40 to 60 days after the infection itself. So that means you have some protection up to maybe about 90 days. So they're suggesting that, um, uh, that all of us or anyone that tests positive uh, for COVID that you wait about 90 days, then you go ahead and get the vaccine because after those 60 to 90 days, you're not gonna have any immunity They've shown that in all the studies that after the infection, 90 days is going to be max that you may have immunity. So it's best that you go ahead and get that vaccine uh, probably somewhere around 90 days. Wow, that's great information. Good information to know. Can it be given with other vaccines? No, because we've had a, now, and let me tell you all something. For years, we have been preaching about this flu vaccine, and I've had people come in my office with all kinds of, it, I can't take it, it gives me the flu, I don't want it, make people, I can't do it. But this year, for the first time ever, I've had a line of folks standing in line wanting a flu shot. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, so that's one good thing that has happened. I've got all these folks that adults that have gotten taken the flu shot. But having said that, you need two weeks uh, prior to any vaccine. So uh, you can get the flu vaccine today, but you got to wait two weeks before you get the COVID uh, vaccine. So it has to be a two week uh, window between each of those vaccines. So no, you cannot get both of them at the same time. You have to space them out for about two weeks. Okay, great information. The vac this vaccine has never been used before in humans. How do I know it is safe? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, you get we get that all the time. So actually, the first injections went out started out in March of 2020, guys. So we're almost a year out now. So and so far, so good. We've had a few folks that may have had some allergic reactions, but uh, for the most part, uh, for all of these months now, we haven't had anybody to have any major uh, issues outside of those handful of folks that have had maybe uh, that have had some allergic reaction. So uh, so true, they have started uh, back in March of 2020. They've been giving it to humans um, in the clinical trials. That was phase one, phase two, phase three. They've got up to well over 80,000 folks, y'all, that have gotten it. Now we've up to 2 million additional folks that have gotten vaccinated after or during the trials now. So, you know, you've got all of those folks and uh, the vast majority of us are doing extremely well. That's great news. You know, we're, we're talking with Dr. Jacobs, fear the virus, not the vaccine. I, I'm loving this information for, our, for the masses out there. What about children and pregnant women? 
So that's a great question. Um, uh, unfortunately, the uh, vaccines are down to the age of 16. And so uh, they did not do any trials or clinical trials in children below the age of 16. Uh, one is at 16, the other one is at 18 years of age. So they didn't do any clinical trials in children, which is par for the course. They usually start them off in adults and then they gradually start adding children in clinical trials. So those clinical trials have started for Pfizer and Moderna in October of 2020. So we don't have the data out yet for the children, but we should be getting that pretty soon. They're looking at making it safe for kids down to the age of 12. Now, pregnant women, uh, because you're pregnant, that is not a reason for you not to get the vaccine. Um, they, what they're asking you to do really is have a good conversation with your OB doctor. Talk about it, weigh out the pros and cons. If you're somebody that uh, before you got pregnant, you had diabetes, you had high blood pressure, or you were morbidly uh, uh, obese or overweight, or you have asthma or COPD, those are comorbid conditions that could cause you to have complications uh, with COVID. So you might want to talk to your OB doctor and weigh it out as to whether or not you should uh, get the uh, COVID vaccine. They have discovered that it doesn't cross the barrier, so it doesn't affect a unborn child. So they know that. So uh, is it safe? It looks like it's going to be fairly safe for pregnant women to get as well. Uh, yeah, that is uh, such a... Um, I'm sure that's a challenging situation for pregnant women because you're thinking about your child and yourself. Yes. Are yes. there any other questions that pregnant women should ask their physician about the, the vaccine? Well, I think that um, the, the biggest thing is that us doctors ought to be asking her, you know, about her past medical history. Okay. Uh, whether or not she's gotten appropriate prenatal care. Uh, did she get her, what vaccines has she had? So you can find out if she's been protected uh, from other uh, illnesses that could come uh, and that could, you, could protect you if you get the vaccine. But it really is our job as physicians to talk to the patient, glean or get a great history from that patient, find out, you know, about uh, diabetes and high blood pressure and all of those comorbid conditions uh, to find, let's weigh it out and then make that decision along with the patient. Uh, there are pregnant women that are getting the vaccine and they are doing very well. So that's actually good news. There are going to be more studies that are going to be coming out real soon. Uh, so you want to play the wait and see game. I can understand that. Oh, I like that. Okay. Yes. And so physicians, there are more questions that you need to ask our pregnant women. Yes. All right. Can patients of color feel safe getting this vaccine? You know, every brown and black and Native American person is very concerned about, which we have good reasons to be. Absolutely. Yeah, abs absolutely. And what I like about the Pfizer and Moderna, as well as there are a couple of more studies, uh, vaccines that are going to come out. Morehouse has got one uh, cooking that's going to be out uh, fairly soon. Uh, but they, everybody, all of the researchers were very concerned about this particular question about uh, uh, brown and black uh, folks, they want to make sure you feel comfortable. So in those research trials, they had almost 30% of folks of color. And so, and they did very well in it, uh, uh, which I thought was absolutely wonderful. Almost 30% in each of those groups. And of course, Morehouse has a huge uh, group of uh, folks of color that are participating in their current trials right now, so that uh, people can feel safe uh, about the vaccine that are being put out for COVID-19. So lots of great data out there, but almost 30% in both groups. And I think that's fantastic. That is because no one has died from taking the vaccine so far. No, and that's the big thing and that, but, but remember, look at all of the folks that have died from COVID though. Yeah. Right. You don't have one person out of the millions of people that have gotten the vaccine. That one has died. But when you have over 350,000 Americans that have died from this virus, really, you need to think about that and weigh out your risks and benefits. Yeah. Yeah. We want to get a handle on this. You know, coronavirus has just 
turned our world upside down. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so I want you, everyone to be mindful, even about the new strains that you hear about as well. Uh, the vaccines seem to be uh, effective against the new strains that are out there. So, but I, I just want folks to be careful at what they do and make a educated decision. My job is not to convince you to get the vaccine, but I want you to be informed. And so you're educated about why you're getting it or why you're not getting it. Great. What about the allergic reactions? So there have been a handful of folks that have gotten allergic reactions. Several of them already had histories of allergic reaction to the point where they carried EpiPens with them. And so that means that they already knew that they had an issue uh, uh, with allergic reactions to vaccines. And so what they're suggesting, if you have a, an allergic reaction so bad to something where your doctor has advised you to carry an EpiPen, then you need to talk to your allergist before you decide to get the vaccine. And your allergist is probably the person that should administer the vaccine uh, if you so decide to desire to get it. Now, if you have just a uh, allergic reaction to say seafood or to peanuts, uh, those folks are still safe to get the vaccine and still recommend it. But again, have a good conversation with your primary care provider, let them know what your concerns are so that they can address it. And then they can make sure that they monitor you for not just the 15 minutes, but they monitor you for at least the 30 minutes and uh, they will have all of the equipment they need just in case you do have an allergic reaction. Yes, we're here with Dr. Jacobs, fear the virus, and not the vaccine. Great information. And the, another question I have for you, is this vaccine effective against the new strains of the virus? Absolutely. They have, uh, and you know, what's interesting, um, uh, they didn't know that we had the strains in the United States because they really weren't looking for the new strains. But now that they're looking for them, they're discovering that uh, it is pretty um, prevalent in these United States, believe it or not. And they're showing that this, these, both of the vaccines are effective against the new strains. And there's several new strains. There's not just one, there's several, but it appears as if, yeah, there's one out of the, uh, not only the UK, but uh, from Africa as well. And uh, it appears as if the vaccines are effective against both, uh, all of the strains to date. My goodness. Well, to, you know, as of today, 365,625 total deaths in the US. Wow. That, that is just overwhelming. So Dr. Jacobs, let's round this out and let's bring everything to kind of a close, but I want you to tell the people something that we have not spoken to. Let's put people in the comfort zone where we want them to fear the virus. People still wear your mask, still social distance, still wash your hands. And what else can we do? Yeah, I think that if there's an opportunity for you to get the vaccine, I want you to seriously consider to get the vaccine. And I want you to seriously consider talking to your friends and your relatives, your church members. I want you to seriously consider getting this vaccine because it is the only real tool that we have to combat to combat this virus, this deadly virus. And so don't you want to go on cruises still? Don't you want to travel? I'm missing my cruise that I got. I go on two cruises every year. Don't you want to travel? Don't you want to be able to see folks' face and their nose and their mouths? Uh, some of you, us, want to date again. So let's, uh, <laughs> so, so let's think about getting the virus, the vaccine. Uh, think, about, think really long and hard about it because once you get the vaccine, uh, you'll have a little bit more freedom. But uh, uh, until we can get what they call herd immunity, where about 70 to 80 percent of us have antibodies against the virus, we are going to be walking around, guys, with these masks. We're going to still be doing social distancing and we're going to still be washing our hands. So think about 
what you want your 2021 to look like. And um, if you've got some uh, goals uh, for 2021, some New Year's resolutions, if you get married this year or whatever it is that you're deciding to do this year, uh, you want to have those big celebrations where you can touch each other, where you can hug each other. So don't you want to hug each other again? Don't you want to touch each other again? Consider the vaccine. Consider it. I, I love that. Are there any additional information that people can obtain or are you coming out with a newsletter of some kind where we can go and then access this information of any kind? Yeah, I'm going to give you a couple of things. Uh, I have a, a, a few videos that are out there. Uh, one is the vaccine and Bell's palsy, because I got a lot of questions about that, asking if the vaccine causes Bell's palsy. But you can go to my Facebook page. I have several um, videos there. You can also go to CDC, because it is user-friendly. Uh, you can print those handouts uh, off and read those. Take them to your family members and your friends and read up on the latest and the greatest from the CDC website. What I will advise you not to do, do not go to social media and whatever folks and believe everything that's on social media. You gotta be careful because everything that's on the internet is not true. Oh, Dr. Jacobs, thank you, thank you, thank you for giving Sister Power audiences pertinent information. And everyone out there remember, fear the virus and not the vaccine. Oceans of aloha, peace and blessings, and thank you again, Dr. Jacobs. Aloha. Aloha.